and proceeds to ruin the rest of the evening by not letting me talk or even walk next to my fiance, trying to keep his attention the entire time like she's jealous. No, not like she's jealous, she is jealous. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of me reading your wedding horror stories, the good, the bad, and everything in between. I'm going to just jump right in this week because this one's a long one. So here we go. Hi, firstly, I love your videos. Thank you so much for posting as much as you do. I'm completely hooked. Thank you for watching. I have written a full detailed story below. I'm sorry it's so long, but when I started writing to get it out, I just couldn't stop. This happens a lot. And actually this is one of the things I encourage when you decide to send me your stories. It's beneficial in both ways. So even if I don't end up using your story, sometimes when something happens to us, I firmly believe that writing it out can really help us maybe heal in some ways or look back in some ways. It just helps us experience it in a new way. And I think it's actually really therapeutic for us. So as someone that enjoys writing, I was a writing minor in college and I dabble in writing here and there. Now I just think it really helps when we're trying to overcome something or experience something in a different way. But the summary is my sister-in-law-to-be turned into a pick-me girl and ruined my engagement my birthday, and any plans of us getting married. This still hasn't been resolved, so I'm happy with any ending you give it and decide to use it as it might help me figure out what to do. So even taking it a step further, as she is saying it has not been solved yet, maybe as I read this, I'll be like, oh, this is a good idea for a skit. And then we can kind of add our own boundaries and see what would be best to help her. But if as I'm reading this, you guys are listening, you're like, this is what she should do, comment and help her out. Okay, so I have an absolutely nightmare sister-in-law to be. We started as great friends friends with her being so lovely to me and reaching out before I'd even met her to start that friendship. It all went downhill when we went on a couple's holiday with her and her boyfriend last year, where I discovered she is the stereotypical baby of the family and a complete pick-me girl, whereas I'm a very quiet and very anxious, non-confrontational person. She has been with this boyfriend for nearly 10 years now, while me and my partner at the time had been together for almost two years. So two days before my birthday, he took me to an amazing historical place for both history buffs that had beautiful gardens. I had already found the ring in the bag we were sharing, silly him, and was completely over the moon. So thinking this girl was my friend, I told her excitedly, oh no, and I begged her not to say anything to her brother as I didn't want to ruin it for him. She looked me up and down and just said, hmm, this took me back, but I didn't let it ruin anything. All right, I'm already getting some jealousy vibes here. Okay. Turns out when I was in the ice cream parlor with her boyfriend, she had confronted my partner and told him that I knew and would hate his plans in the pretty garden. He told her what he was planning to say and she said, I wouldn't like that either. No. See, this is where like, oh my gosh, like I'm like, don't say anything to anybody. Like I would pretend I didn't see it, but I get it. You're excited and you think this is like one of your really good friends. So why not? You don't see any of this coming. She then completely took over and gave him a random code word to say when she thought he should do it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and told him to say something funny instead of something heartfelt, which is what he was planning on. No, that puts so much more pressure on the partner too, because then it's like he had this whole thing planned in his head. Like he knows her best. Like she wants something heartfelt. This is what makes the most sense for our relationship. And then this other person's coming in saying like, no, you need to be funny instead. And that's going to put more pressure on it. So the entire day I walked around getting more and more impatient and confused with her smirking at me when it wasn't happening at all in these picturesque places. That is terrible. He had this whole thing set out and then she made him second guess everything. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Just as we're about to leave, she gives him the go ahead and makes it super obvious at the top of some stairs, scary, and then whips out her phone. So she made this whole proposal about herself. I obviously say yes, as I knew from the second I met him that he was the one. Before we even had the chance to be happy in the news, she shouts out that she's bored now and wants to go somewhere else. Okay, so she says that they are really good friends before all this happened. So I'm really surprised and like curious to see if like there were any red flags before this or if just all of a sudden she gets like jealous and wants to control everything. We call our families and his mom didn't think much of it as she already told everyone and made it out like I was being a brat all day about it. 
Wait, what? Okay, I need to know more about the mom thinking you were being a brat now. It makes me wonder if the sister went and told the mom like, oh, this is not right, or she did something wrong or something. She then spends the day going into souvenir shops, putting on giant fake rings, telling me how hers is better and bigger than mine. What a weird thing to do. And telling us we need to make her boyfriend propose as we should have known not to get engaged first as they have been together longer than us. <sighs> Guys, we do not need to do this. This is so tacky. If someone just gets engaged, talk about them, boost them up, highlight them. This is not your time to talk about your engagement, talk about that you should be getting engaged, talk about your wedding or your past wedding 20 years ago. This is about this couple, so tacky. Sister-in-law is my fiance's little sister and only really with her partner for his money and that he lets her walk all over him. He is genuinely a lovely bloke though, so I know they are overseas, I'm guessing in England somewhere. She then proceeds to ruin the rest of the evening by not letting me talk or even walk next to my fiance, trying to keep his attention the entire time like she's jealous. No, not like she's jealous, she is jealous. I mentioned this to my fiance, he doesn't think much of it because he's just happy and very laid back person. He doesn't seem to notice drama, which is good and bad. Like you want them to be like, hey, don't you see this is kind of weird. I let it go and just try to ignore it. Two days later, she ruins my birthday too by doing what she did on my engagement. We could only go to the place she wanted, then making it so I was walking alone. Wherever I tried to talk to my partner, she yelled over to me, then insisted that they go watch sports and saying how I hate it so I would be fine staying in the hotel alone not wanting to cause any trouble i agree i'm again so confused by this how is she controlling your birthday and everyone's just okay with it i understand like wanting to keep the peace but as we said last month and in my merch protect your peace and it's, it's so hard to know the difference between keeping the peace and protecting your peace because sometimes it's like okay my peace is just not getting involved or you know trying to start drama but like this is ridiculous that everyone was just like it's okay it's fine whatever we're just gonna let her do what she wants. I was absolutely devastated, but tried making the most of it by spending time on the phone with my friend who is now threatening to fly out and put her in her place. I then find out my mother has been rushed to the hospital not being able to breathe. Oh my gosh. I call my fiance in a panic who is incredibly drunk at this point as his sister told him she messaged me to say they were staying out late to drink when she actually hadn't. He told her what was going on and that led her to start crying and say that their mom was making her all insecure and how she can't cope without my partner being her best friend and how she needs him more right now as she doesn't see him much. They're not even that close and his mom's a saint. What? So you're calling your fiance to say that your mom has having trouble breathing and she turns it around, makes it about their own mother and starts crying? Like, I'm so confused. Me and my fiance end up in a huge fight. I gave him back the ring and luckily there were apologies and we made up the next day. When we get home, I try to start wedding planning, which she tries to take over and make about herself saying that she has to be his best man, which he says, absolutely not. This is like a similar skit that I did a while back where a twin sister demanded to be the best man and the bride and groom were like no like we just want one person each and you're not in it and she kept finding ways to insert herself and like i always say it's great to offer to the new bride and groom how can i help i would love to be a part of your day if you would like to have me not i'm gonna be this i'm gonna do this i want to do that like offer your help and then just wait offer your help again and just wait we're not inserting ourselves. Then saying she's going to plan it as her gift to us. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna say no because red flags all around. She's gonna make it all about herself. She's gonna to have a speech where she talks about her own proposal and her own like engagement coming up and her wedding and she would do this. She's gonna sabotage it. Then tells me I'm having a courthouse wedding. Then back to his mom's for a buffet, which is great for some, but that's not what we wanted, especially when she hasn't invited anyone from my side. What? So she She's like, I'm gonna plan it for you guys, but you know what? You're gonna have a courthouse wedding and then you can go to my mom's house afterwards. Like, that's not what they want. This was all a year ago. We still haven't gotten married or actually started planning it, but thank the Lord after this, I pulled away from his family as they started treating me differently due to all her bad mouthing. That is insane that they let one girl, when you were so close, you loved their mom, all getting along, and then now the daughter or the sister is talking bad about you, so everyone's just believing it and they all treat you differently. That is terrible. They are all under her thumb and make excuses for her and let her rule the family. Ugh. This is terrible. I feel so bad for the bride. If we see each other at all, she will make it all about her and try to put me down. No. 
and thought her brother was on her side by saying she was the most important person in his life and I would never come close. That is a weird jealousy to have. You don't want to be as close to your brother as their bride. That doesn't make sense. Like you can be close, sure, but let's not compare yourself as a sister to their bride. It's kind of weird. Thankfully, he has now seen the light and pulled away from her too. We are now discussing getting married, just the two of us on holiday next year, away from her as my friend, my mother, and my sister all want to fight her. If you managed to read all of this, thank you so much. And again, thank you for giving me an outlet to get all this out. Oh my gosh. Okay, so as I said in the beginning, sometimes it's therapeutic typing it all out. So I'm glad to see just typing it out helped her. And we might need to follow up and get some more details of like what's going on, especially if this happened a year ago and they're still kind of dealing with this weirdness. It sounds like the sister is definitely dealing with her own insecurities about being with her partner so long, not getting engaged. But that's something I just can't get. Like to get a little more personal here, my now husband and I were together probably six years, five and a half years before we got engaged. It just wasn't in the plans for us right away. Like we wanted to be more stable in our jobs. We'd already lived together. We saw so many friends start dating and siblings start dating in our relationship and get married. And we were there to like love on them and support them. It was never like, oh my gosh, another one. Oh my gosh, another. Like it was exciting. It was so fun to be a part of all these weddings. We need to know that every relationship has their own timeline. Every relationship has their own goal. Each person has their own goal. So if you're taking it personally and acting insecure and jealous, you need to look inward instead of being rude outward. I feel so sorry for this bride and I really hope you guys have some healing. I'm glad to hear that the husband's now or your partner is now on your side with everything and can see the light because that's hard. It's hard when it's family pushing you guys against each other. So that's good. But I need to know more about this story and we need some updates. So send me some updates if you got them. But thanks so much guys for hanging out with me and I will have a new video for you guys next week. And I'm working on so many other projects right now. So more things to be coming up very soon. If you are not on my newsletter, click the link below to sign up. And I send out weekly newsletters every single week. It's like a fun, almost like gossip column mixed with empowerment piece. There's some fun like wedding trivia. There's some more confessions. There's some polls in there, more wedding stories that you don't see anywhere else. So it's a fun read. It's a, a fun little newsletter I've got going on for you guys. All right, guys, thanks so much. And I'll see you next week. Bye.